Now in this section we'll talk about the random LED detection mechanisms which is a congestion awareness mechanisms to overcome the issues with the tail drop and TCP global synchronization issues. Like in the previous section we have seen a TCP uh, synchronization issues where so TCP synchronization issues generally happens when where you have a large TCP streams coming up and because of the congestion your packets get dropped it will increase the number of TCP sessions. Now the pattern of sending decreasing or increasing the transmission rates at the same time is referred as TCP synchronization. And also that, that happens generally based, based on the tail drops. Now to overcome this, what we can do is we can implement some congestion awareness mechanisms called random LED detection. And what exactly it's going to do is it is going to selectively drop the traffic before the queue is full. Now let, let's say this is the maximum queue size before it actually reaches the limit. It's going to drop before the queue is actually full. Now it's going to signal the individual TCP flows also to slow down the sending rate, uh, which will also avoid the TCP synchronization issues as well. Now in the random LED detection, it is going to define three different parameters. We are going to define the minimum threshold value, maximum threshold and, and the maximum drop probability values. Now before we go ahead with this, now the TCP, this this red red mechanism is going to work only if there is if the hardware queue is full. Now if your queue is full, then only it is going to work. If the queue is not full, these none of these methods will start again. Now here it is going to define some minimum threshold value. Now the minimum threshold value is nothing but uh, we are going to define the level of packets at which we will begin the random drop process. Now we are going to define some minimum threshold value. And anything below to this, we are not going to drop anything. Once it reaches that limit, we are going to define the value that it's going to start a random drop. Random, it will stop dropping the traffic. And, and we have something called maximum threshold value. Now the maximum threshold value is going to tell. Now anything between the minimum threshold to maximum threshold, it's going to do drops. And once it reaches the maximum threshold, it's going to do something called tail drop. It's going to drop each and every packet once it reaches the maximum threshold. So we are going to define some minimum threshold and maximum threshold values like how many packets uh, should be present. Let's say if there are output queues support something called 40 packets, I'm going to define saying that the minimum threshold value should be 25 and the maximum threshold value should be 35. So anything below 30, 25, it's, it's not going to drop anything. Once it reaches 25 to 35, it's going to randomly drop the packets. And, and anything exceeding 35 is going to do the tail drop again. Now we'll see how to define these parameters again more in detail in the implementation in our next video. Uh, we can even change these parameters. Now the Cisco deployed something called weighted random LED detection where we are going to apply some weight to a specific kind of traffic. Like uh, instead of dropping the traffic randomly, what we can do is we can define some weight. Let's say you have a traffic coming with a presence value of one and the presence value of three. Now most likely presence value one will get dropped because of the less weight. Or it can be DSCP values as well. You have a traffic coming with a DSCP value of A of two one and we have traffic with A11, 11 is going to get dropped more likely than this one. So where uh, it's going to select the drop the packets based on the markings or, or based on the QS markings or based on the weight we call it as. So that is what a uh, Cisco addition to the existing random LED detection mechanisms. Now we can apply this either on the interface level or on the class level. So if you're using some older iOS versions, you will have this option on the interface where we can go to the interface and we can simply say random detect and just press enter. So if you do not define anything, it's going to do the default uh, based on the IP presence values. And if you want to change to DSCP based, we can change this parameter here. Now we can define what, what exactly, what weight exactly it has to see or what QS marking it has to see when it starts dropping the traffic. Now there are some predefined uh, predefined queue lengths for each and every presence value. Like if you're using presence value of one, the, man, the minimum threshold will be 22. If you're using presence value, the minimum threshold will change to 24. Or even we can change these parameters manually. 
uh, we'll, we'll see this configuration as we go ahead in the previous sections. Now, if you go with the new iOS versions, you may not see this implementation on the interface. Now, again, this configuration varies based on the iOS versions again. Um, not all the new iOS I have checked that it supports only class level based random detailed configurations. Now, the last implementation, we have something called class based weighted fair rate where we are going to create some class maps like we did in the previous sessions. And then we are going to match some specific amount of traffic, a voice, or, or we are going to define our own parameters like in the class one, I'm going to match zero and one. And in the class two, I'm going to match the presence value of two and three. And in the class three, I'm going to match the presence value of four. And I can define, define the red values, random detection values, where we can manually define what should be the minimum and the maximum threshold based on the class maps. Now in the class maps, we are differentiating the traffic with voice or anything, and we are going to define some marking values, and it's going to treat based on the markings given by the administrator uh, instead of using the default marking values. Now the configuration wise, it's, it's simple. We need to get into the policy map and we need to simply say random detect. Like here you can see for Michigan mission critical traffic, we have enabled random detect here. So the major difference between these three is like in the case of random LED detection, it's simply uh, simply randomly before, before the, it reaches the maximum limit, it's going to randomly drop the packets and there's no weight applied here where all the packets are treated equally and most likely your the big size packets get stopped when you compare with the small size packets. And in the weighted rate, weighted rate, it's a Cisco implementation where the random LED detection will be done based on the marking values or based on the weight. And nowadays in today's network, we use something called class based weighted rate where we can define all the traffics in different class maps and we can uh, define the define the marking values like minimum and the maximum threshold inside the class maps also.